I believe so. Four attachments. Four? Yeah, there was the agenda. The minutes. And the minutes, and then two items. A review on two items. So when you open it up, you'll see there are four attachments. I'll just have my microphone in. Yeah, just press the button until it goes green. And then let's get our settings. It isn't going green. It isn't? There we go. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Was that Curtis that I heard on? Yes. It is, yeah. Give me, oh, you know what I can do? Let me move this and move this over here. Then you can see it. There oh, you great. Go. I just and hadn't had, I just hadn't done it yet. <laughs> Steven's on. Cindy's on. Okay. Let's see here. Tony's here. Sarah Jane is here. Mark is here. How's everyone doing? We're doing good. I can hear everybody, but I've lost my video. Do you guys still see me? Yes. 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 Yep. <laughs> I can't see anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went back into my email to pull these other the forms up. Is it just behind your emails? Nope. Did you finally get video, Curtis? <laughs> no, I, I'm trying to figure out if I need to go. Well, you guys are right there, but I don't have. Oh, there we go. I've got it. It minimized. <laughs> so I figured I'll look don't there. Don't want to be minimized. Good evening. Hello. Hello, Mark. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining electronically and I'm assuming we'll do this probably at least one more meeting. I, I you know, we'll, we'll see as time goes on. I, I'm, I know some people, some places are starting to meet more in public setting again, but I think we probably want to use a little caution still. But. Now that they've developed the setup, Mark, is there a potential for um, planning commission members to 
participate remotely or is it going to be one or the other? That's a good question. I, I know that they are talking about using this as an example of what we need to do to for other situations to be able to have people call in and, and things like that. So I'm not sure yet. Welcome aboard, Scott. <laughs> Why, thank you. He's... Oh, I didn't recognize you, Scott, from last meeting. <laughs> yeah, I got a haircut. And, I'm and a top man down here. <laughs> <laughs> Your haircut and places are open now? Um, the one that I use is always open. Oh, <laughs> wife? Yep. Well, it's, anyway, yeah, she's cap very capable of cutting my hair and sometimes willing. Hey, Mark. Yes. If they, this is just something wild off the top of my head here a minute, but if they build the, the total, uh, the golf course out here, if they build all that in, they got to throw in another park over here. There we go, I think. You mean the old golf course? Yeah. We're like, Jay's going to build his section. And then last time we, two weeks ago, we saw the new development for up in the, uh, Southeast corner of the golf course. Yeah, it's with not the alleyways and stuff. It, it's not considered a, a park. Uh, on the general plan, we do identify a need for a park up in that area. Um, but what they were proposing was more of a private portion with their planned development project. Well, no, because that area is all going to be built in. Is there a, a requirement to build a park? Uh, not for the developers. The, the way the city has done it is they get the impact fees off of buildings and then they get that pool of money and they apply it to uh, park projects. Oh, okay. And do it that way. We'll, we'll talk more when we, we can and I'll give you an update. Okay. Good question. Hey, uh, it is now 6 p.m. and we will open the regular session of the Brigham City Planning Commission for May 19th, 2020. We begin through the, by repeating the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd like to join me, you may. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the United of the United States, States of America. America. Republic to the republic for which, for which it stands, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We um, now would like to discuss the minutes for April 21st. Is there any comments on the minutes? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the minutes from the previous meeting. I'll second that motion. 
Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The minutes have been approved. We will now move on to the items that are uh, on the agenda this evening. We, since they are so closely related, we will discuss them together and uh, then we will make separate recommendations at the end, but it's application 20-25 20 preliminary <laughs> subdivision plat for the Langford townhomes and then application number 2026, which is the conditional use for the same property. And we would ask Mark Bradley to give us an introduction to this topic at this time. Okay, thanks. So as, as mentioned, these two applications are really hand in hand. Uh, the, the first one is the proposed townhome subdivision plat. It consists of three phases and a total of 27 units. There are two existing buildings. I'll go ahead and share the screen of the PowerPoint. Do you see the, the main slide or does it show the side slides as well? Both. 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 It shows the main slide and the side slides. All right, so I will. Okay, there we go. All right, so as we got the two applications together, I'm gonna to start through, here is the area of reference. You can see the, the city golf course uh, there to your Northeast. The uh, Eagle View Home Associates HOA is on the West side and also on the Southeast side. Hey Mark, uh, we're, I think we're still seeing the same view of the side slides and the, yeah. Thank you, okay. And it didn't advance. All right, let me stop sharing and start that over then. Thank you for letting me know on that. All right, does it show the project area now? No. It's on the introductory sheet. Oh, there you go. There we go. There we go. But it still shows the left, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But well, we can see the project area now. You have advanced to that slide. I am going to try one more thing really quick. Okay, this should work. Did it enlarge the screen then? It did. Yeah, that's better. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Okay, so this is showing the general area. It's actually two parcels, but one project. There are two existing buildings. The, the area where the arrow is, is the old auditorium portion, and that has been uh, demolished as of this point. We'll show some pictures coming up. You got the Woodland Senior Housing to the south. That's probably one of the newer projects other than the Brigham Place apartment phase two. And then uh, as we advance, here's the site. This is an older aerial as mentioned, but fairly a uh, good representation. Here is the uh, parcel ownership with the uh, names by the web county web map. And again, this is the Langford project. You can see the names here. Here is the preliminary plot for consideration phase three phases. Phase one will be the east building. And again, a portion of that building has been removed and then the majority of the building would be uh, divided up into 12 townhome units. Phase two would have uh, another, uh, would have eight units. Number 20 is currently uh, a unit right now. That's kind of uh, a site, uh, a, a unit that's been on site for a good year now. Um, and then the seven larger units to the, to the south of phase two, which is shown as phase three, would be the new townhome units. We'll show some illustrations later. So this is the phasing again with the existing conditions. Here is, uh, this was the initial submittal with the uh, 
the, the basin area and we'll show some changes that have been made. And just as a quick note, some of the illustrations will show 28 units, but it, it's just a, a typo of uh, the first a unit was going to consist of 12 and it was changed to, I mean, 13 and it was changed to 12. And so there's just a few of those in the exhibits, but overall 27 units. So here's the older version of the, the basin area. There's quite some concern with the design and, and uh, retaining wall. We just want to show the difference in, in the update because there are comments in your staff review. But I believe you have both illustrations in your packet. So here is the revision. I, I'll move on here. I'll show the difference between the, the two uh, with the recreation and the basin area here shortly. This is the back, uh, the south side of the phase one building. So you can see the slope and kind of gives you an idea of, of their initial design. The, uh, the vinyl fence was put up with the, the Woodland Senior Housing Project. This gives you, again, a little more area that you can see that they're trying to work with for the recreation playground area as well as the basin. So the, the top portion was the original design. And after uh, the staff review, uh, the engineer has, re has redesigned the area and, and the city engineer is allowing for some sumps to be put in that area so they could flatten out the area, have a little lesser retaining wall uh, where, which would only be about, uh, I believe about 16 inches above grade with a four inch gap between the wall and the existing final fence. And then you'd pretty well have a 20 foot flat area uh, for the recreation area. On their plan, they, they do show the recreation coming out a little further with the, the wall, I mean the, the rock wall. And so, with the recreation area, uh, part of staff comments was that it, it talks about a portion of the area can be counted towards it, not the entire area. So staff is identifying some areas that can be counted towards that overall recreation between units 12 and 22, and then on the west side of 28 would meet the criteria for that recreation area. Uh, they can identify that with the uh, final plan set to show the, the area of 3,000 square feet that's required. Um, here is the landscape plan, um, basically just a uh, grass lawn throughout, uh, with a lot of little pocket areas and then the, the trees. Uh, one uh, tree is required per unit. They have, I believe, exceeded that. There are some... Um, areas uh, that with the planting of the tree, uh, the city engineer uh, feels that that can be met with uh, the nature of the, the design with the parking outside of that front setback area with the, the trees. The trees can be adjusted to make sure that there is that clear view area that the site distance is needed on that curvature. As you'll notice with the, uh, there is a shared uh, Access with the west property, which is the Eagle View uh, phase, I believe it's phase one, but it's the Eagle View project. Uh, they'll need to enter into an, an access and a maintenance agreement in that area. And then also on the east side, there's a shared drive that uh, is used by Woodlands and also the other portion of the Eagle View HOA. And again, that would need to be. Uh, taking place and, and recorded if, if there isn't anything in place at this point. Um, I did get a call today by by Caitlin Linford, who is uh, part of the property management um, on this, and she's unable to attend, but I believe we have, um, I, th I think Stephanie Tuga and maybe Lynn Tuga will be joining on the meeting. Uh, that have a uh, property in the area too. Lynn used to be the HOA uh, president when we did the Brigham Place Apartments Phase Two project. I, I was told it was, it's a Greg Christensen now that's the HOA president, but uh, the Caitlin Linford, I guess she's met uh, and, and has spoken with Brett and Gina in the past and, and uh, they'll need to work those out as part of the a condition of approval uh, working through that. 
um, let me just move on to the elevation. So here's current and, and proposed rendering. Here's phase one. So this gives you a street view of what's going on here, the, the demolition and another view. You can see there's been quite a bit of cleanup work going on. And here's the uh, one of the uh, portions of the building that's going to extend. There's, there's one on the east and west side that would be part of units one and 12. Uh, this is phase two. I'm just jumped ahead. How did, yeah, I got it in the wrong place. All right, so here's phase one of the elevation. So this is a new elevation that we received today. So you have um, the older ones in your packet. And uh, this, so what they're identifying, this is in your packet as well, talking about what they will be doing as far as uh, replacing the existing roof and uh, replacing the, the windows. Uh, adding uh, both front and back entryways. Uh, the brick, um, some brick will be replacing areas where it's, it, there's gaps with the demolition. And then it, they refer to uh, painting the building with, <coughs> with different colors, um, a lighter color for the main part of the brick with trim of, of the darker color. And I can let the applicants get into that a little more. And then, um, each resident would have their own approach to the building. So this is taking a portion of that L to, to enlarge it a little bit. So you can see some improvements that are showing with the roofing and the entrance features. Uh, we don't have a side entrance to know what, the details of the, the entry itself, but we, we, we can allow the applicant to talk about that a little more. Um, here's phase two. This is pretty well going to stay intact. Uh, this is the elevate the side, and then here's here's the building rendering, and then a, a little closer up. So much of the wording's pretty similar. Um, they just won't have the detailed features with each of the the front doors. They're a little different, which is which is fine for each building. And the, the little unit here on the right is the existing uh, dwelling, kind of the on-site uh, care manager and, oh, currently. And then phase three, this would be the new construction with a little different style of architecture. And this is their, ex their description about the, the building itself with the type of siding and trim with a stone accent in the front. Um, so those two buildings, I mean, excuse me, yeah, the two building structures with the new construction will each have a two-car garage. I will have Brett confirm that, but that's my understanding. And then you have the, the 42 uncovered parking spaces for the, the 20 units so that they have a couple extra for, for some guest parking or if, if needed, if ADA is required in some areas, they can make those adjustments. But two parking stalls are required for each unit. And that goes through everything that I wanted to get to. I'll just go back to the preliminary plat and then see if there's any questions for me. And then uh, it looks like Brett is in, is on the, here with Jim Flint if there are questions from the applicant. All right. Does any of the commissioners have questions for Mark? Well, I've got kind of one. Which was the, is it 13 or was it number one that has the flat roof? It's, it's number one. One and 12. Now, weren't they going to change those to have the pitched roof? And indeed we are. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mark. Uh, and I noticed that uh, you know, this did just come today and I noticed that they did not uh, add that pitched roof on that portion, but th there, there is going to be a pitched portion. And so it would be just like that upper roof on the long building. It would carry that same uh, uh, view, but it would, uh, it would extend at a lower elevation. So it would add a roof line uh, over that uh, existing flat roof. 
Okay. I just wanted to make sure that the, what I kind of read and what I saw was going to be the same, but okay. I understand that. I'm good now. That's a good Reed, clarification. Do you have any Reed, do you have any questions? <clears throat> no, I don't. Uh, do I have to unmute this so you can hear me? Yes, kind of. Steve, do you have any questions? No, I, I don't have any questions. I'm just uh, kind of wondering how the two applications go together, but I'm sure we'll get to that. Yeah, I could explain that briefly. Uh, the first one is just the subdivision, the division of the land. And then in the city code, any multifamily project, uh, three or more units requires a conditional use permit, which is really your design review of the project where you're, you're looking and dealing with the elevation of the building. Um, you're looking at your, of course, parking can be really in either one of those applications, but generally parking, parking, your recreation playground area, uh, just the overall nature of the project. And then with the conditional uses, we do have the, the policy that we send out neighboring notices to property owners within 300 feet. And that's not for the subdivision plat itself, but for the, the multifamily component. Okay, that clears it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, did I already, uh, Cindy, did, do you have any questions? Um, it seems like when we discussed this as, you know, as a discussion item, there was <clears throat> some concern about placement of dumpsters. Was that worked out? I, let me show you where they're showing it and then uh, we'll let Brett address that. That was one comment that we did put in the staff because it was brought up from the planning commission in the discussion. So the dumpster is somewhat central, I guess you could say to the project. And, and the question is, you know, how, how does that impact the, the far reached units and will they have to potentially have more frequent uh, pickups, you know, rather than once a week is, you know, but we could allow the, uh, the applicant to address that question, if that's all right. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, we felt that the location was very central, obviously unit, the first, you know, one unit, two, three, it may, might be a little further walk, but, um, I didn't feel that that was going to be a problem. Um, as far as schedule of dumping, I mean, I, I think whatever it takes to, to, you know, to supply the needs of, of the, you know, of the people there, I, I don't know that that's a problem. It's just a, a, a process of, you know, uh, filling the needs as they arise. Obviously, as, as we build out, uh, you're going to have more people there as time goes on, and, and we're going to have to increase the frequency as, as we go. Part of the, uh, we have to have a forward loading dumpster. So trying to get a good travel path, that's the best location to be able to head straight into the dumpster pad and to be able to forward load it. That, that's kind of the reasoning behind the, other than the central location behind that, behind that location. You could put us, you could put can. One dumpster, is that just gonna be one or is it gonna be a double? You know, I, I, we hadn't thought um, whatever it takes. I, I, uh, I just thought a single dumpster, but um, if, if, that's not, if that's not sufficient, we'll, we could certainly make it two. Cause I'm thinking 27, un or 27 units, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I don't know if one can is going to be enough, really. I don't know. Well, we're glad to do whatever needs to be done. If, 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 uh, I don't know if there's a way to measure that, um, considering the size of the dumpster and the frequency and, you know, maybe there's some kind of study dumpster study is kind of like they do traffic studies that we could get some, uh, some numbers on that. Cause I really don't know. 
but I'd be glad to, we want to make sure it's right. I mean, our whole purpose is to really have a good product here. One of the things um, we can monitor it for phase one, You'll, you're only considering the phase one plant at this time. So when we come back for phase two, we'll have a, we should have a good barometer, a good feel for it at that time. Uh, just a clarification, you're, you're, you're really considering all three phases. It's a preliminary plan. Okay. Yeah, they don't deal with the final. That goes right to the city council when that's ready. Okay. So I think you either look at frequency of a pickup, potentially, if you got 27 units. Uh, you could look at the volume of a typical garbage can, but to, if you had two pickups during the week versus one, you know, those are things that could be considered, but whatever the planning commission is, is comfortable with. I'm just concerned if it gets full, then we're, are people just going to start throwing it right next to it? And then who would be responsible to clean it up? That was only my concern, but. Yeah. I mean, there would be room at that spot for two dumpsters, wouldn't there? Yeah, yeah, I think so. One thing to consider is if you have a larger space, is the frequency of the pickup less to the smells? I don't know. That that may be Maybe as a it, it, you could have as a condition that they uh, do some additional study and research on that and get back with staff and see if you're if you want to give us some direction as a staff to we could do that as well. Okay, Cindy, do you have other questions or comments? Um, no, that's the only question I had. Scott? Uh, describe, yeah. describe one more time that west retaining wall for the capture basin in the back. It's probably a Jim question. That'd be the south. Mark has it right there. We're actually, actually really pleased with this. <laughs> The, uh, the wall only extends up 16 inches above grade. And so uh, we had a sloping area before, but there was question whether that was usable recreation area. So this now widens a flat area to 20 feet wide. And then there's just 30 inches of boulders on the, uh, on the north side, which we think the kids are gonna love. And um, so there's a good long corridor. This is. This will go for about 250 feet. So it's quite a lengthy, it'll be close to a football field long, this flat area in the back. Is that just a, basically a little short cement wall? That is, yeah. And the gap, the gap between the wall and the fence is? That was discussed at length in the staff review meeting. We, we ended up landing on four inches to try to minimize that area. And um, we did have that at about a foot or two feet before, but there was a yeah. desire to minimize that. I'll just give you a suggestion. I would work with the wall owner to try to get something that would, would cap that off or not cap it off, but yeah, close it off and maybe act as a cap on your wall because a four inch gap just feels like a garbage can that's very difficult to clean out. I, I mean, you just, it just feels like a debris trap, but anyway, that's kind of between you and your neighbor. Point. Uh, other than that, I don't think I have any more questions. Okay. Um, do any of the commissioners have additional questions? No, I'm done. I just, I know, pardon? I just, how many, uh, how many of those uh, manholes are, are in the middle of the field? Like, are they ever, is there one or two, or are they ever so far? Or? This is a... Uh, kind of a neat thing. Um, there's two of them. It's just a, uh, it drops down to about 20 inches in the middle. And we've got the piping 
kind of a neat thing is the piping goes into the sumps and the sumps are interconnected. So any low flows, low, low volume storms will actually pipe directly to the sumps and they'll never even surface out of the sump area. So it's not like a lot of the ponds where you, you take a pipe into one end and it kind of gets the area all soggy on its way to the outlet. We've got the piping uh, connecting directly into the sumps. So that'll, uh, that'll go a long ways to keeping, uh, probably most storms won't even, won't even surface out of the sumps. But, but as far as being a, a playing field then, if, if kids were playing football on that field, there would only be two manholes to worry about. That's correct, yeah. They'll be graded lids and yeah. Okay, um, I noticed in the staff review comments that there was some concern about this, uh, this design mark or is the, uh, is the staff all right with this or did we need to continue or where are we on that? Yeah, the, the comment that you saw, well, with, with several of them was based on the initial design. The city engineer did get to uh, make comment of which one of those items he responds to this new design and he expressed support of that. Um, I haven't heard back from Public Works, but they, they do rely on the city engineer with, with the design and function of these. And, and, and as discussed, there was quite a bit of discussion with the staff review just on the, the design of the, the basin area and how not to create the potential impact on the south property as well as real solid questions as far as whether or not it could really be counted towards the recreation area. And so um, anyway, I, I think for the majority part uh, that the new design addressed uh, the concerns and the solution for the area. Uh, the comment that, that uh, Scott brought up is, was definitely brought up because they had 16 inch gap before uh, and now they're down to four inches, but it's still one of those little nuisance traps. Uh, as long as, you know, safety was one item that we talked about quite a bit as well as the trash and that. And so safe, safety and just general, how do you, how do you keep that area clean and, and safe for the, the children? And I don't know if there's some other solutions that can come up with the, to help that little gap. But to answer your question, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, we do have the support for that design for that. Thank you. That's what I was concerned about was the support for that design. Um, all right, we do any of the commissioners have any additional comments or questions? Okay, we have we have two applications here that we've been considering. The first one is application 20-25 preliminary subdivision plat, Langford townhome subdivision. And before we get to asking for a motion, I do have a question for uh, the, the applicant. The question is, have you read the staff comments? Are yeah. you- I'm sorry. Are you okay with all of the staff comments and complying with the comments that, and the stipulations and the findings in fact in the staff review? I, I am. Okay. That's very important because they will be binding and you should know that they will be binding. All right. Uh, if we if we are to the point now, we can make a motion to recommend for the, for the preliminary plat. We are not the land use authority, so we make a recommendation to the city council. And that's for application 2025. 
let's handle that one first and then we'll move on to application 2026 which is the conditional use permit uh, chairman lester yes th this is mark um, where we sent out notices to the property owners would you mind uh, allowing them to make any comment if no there i are would any? love to i would love to have them make comment i didn't know that they were participating yeah, so primarily for uh, O26, but they're, they're, like I say, they're tied together. But anyway, it looks like we have two attendees. I don't know if they have comments or not, or questions, but uh, certainly if, we if that's okay. That, I think we, we need, need to with our notice. Right, we need to handle that. So uh, Stephanie Tugga Madsen, do you have comments? Um, we, my mom and I, Lynn Tuga and I are both here. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. So, um, Lynn oh, missed. Hang the... on for a second. Okay. Excuse me, Stephanie. I need to have those names read slowly so that we can get get a record of that. This is a little more awkward than when we can do it. So, who is on with you? Lynn Tuga, L-Y-N-N -N is her first name, and then Tuga is T-U-G-A-W. Thank you. And then Stephanie, S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E, -E, last name Tuga, T-U-G-A-W hyphen Madsen, M-A-D-S-E-N. Thank you, very, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need for the record. All right, go ahead, please. Okay, so my understanding from the prior comments is you want a access and maintenance agreement with Eagle View, both on the yellow feather side and the Arapaho side. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and then where the um, where the carport encroaches on Langford's property and the and the one parking space. Are we, is Eagle View allowed to keep those in place and use those parking spaces? I can address that if you'd like. Okay, Jim. The, uh, the area between, we made sure we had a full 26 feet between the carport and um, it looks kind of foreboding there, but it's on, it is actually, we're making sure we have two full travel lanes such that the carport would stay intact. Okay. Yeah. And the parking stall to the east of the carport, is it still gonna be functional use? To the east of the carport, I would say no. Okay. Meaning, there'll be a couple of, there's a couple of parallel stalls shown along the west side of unit 20. Okay. But the big thing there, we, uh, we did try to maintain a 24 foot minimum pathway between the northeast uh, covered carport and the um, and the curving on the east side of that entry. Okay, then does Eagle, does the yellow feather then still maintain enough parking stalls to meet compliance if we lose that parking spot east of the carport? Yes. Lynn, Lynn says yes, that there should still be enough. Um, so, and then another question I have, the two little parking spots that are um, south of unit one, are those required in there in order to meet the minimum amount of parking spaces for Langford's property? Well, the... Um... The first part of the project requires 24 parking stalls and those two bring it up to 27. Those were really a convenience stalls that the stalls will be actually a unit assigned for uh, phases one and two. So those would be assigned to unit one for exclusive use. Uh huh. There wasn't really a desire to uh, at this time to even deal with anything on the east side on that triangle area. Okay. 
there, there are issues with trying to get snow removed from woodlands and our parking area. And that area has been fenced off in the past. And we have a lot of trouble with three different people trying to remove park, uh, the snow removal. We have a lot of problems with that. Would it be, uh, just seem like, do they use that Southeast Triangle for the snow removal area? That, that's well, the thing that comes to thought. The east, the east man that goes down that we granted through part of our property when we when they sold to Woodland to build the Woodland property, that cuts that cut across our area. Can you can you see that from there? Okay. So see how we have an entrance to our upper parking and they have an entrance down to Woodlands parking and trying to get all of that snow out of there with three different people trying to eliminate snow has been very difficult. See, you, you're gonna have to eliminate snow from that little two uh, parking places. That's gotta get put someplace. And there isn't, there isn't a place to push it on your property. Well, that little, uh... One of those interesting things, that grassy area, that southeast corner. Yeah. That's actually in fee simple part of the project. Um, to get the privilege of paying taxes on it. <laughs> and uh, so we, that's- You're talking about the little triangular piece that's up above? Right here. Okay. That's actually part that, of the- That is something that has been attached to the Eagle View Arapaho property for the last 23 years. And it is, that's all underwater and irrigation from ours from the very get go. So are you planning on, on taking that and taking that out? Right now there's no plans just to leave it. Just, uh, just desire and recognition that certainly appreciate Woodland and, and the development you're talking about about taking care of that area. Uniquely, the driveway entrance to that area and that southeast grassy pocket area are actually owned in fee simple by the Langfords. They're the ones actually paying the taxes on it. The well, idea there is to leave well enough alone. And um, that's the idea. So we just need to work out with the associations then what's going to happen with that grassy area. Yeah, that that is one of the uh, with that access and maintenance agreement there. If um, if Brett and his wife would like to have you guys still, you know, maintain that, and then that would be part of the the maintenance agreement that really needs to be in place of who does what uh, with that property. Because okay. if not, they're responsible to, to landscape it and maintain it. And if, if they want your group to continue to do that, that's, that's really between the two parties. That, and that was a comment that we'd like to resolve with the, uh, through the approval process. It, it's not going to have a necessarily a resolution tonight, but it's a requirement before the plans are officially you know, plotted and recorded. Do you have a timing aspect on that, Mark, when that's when you need that done by? Yeah, that would need to be done before the final plot would be recorded. Okay. But timing wise, what are Langford's, what's what's the time frame? I'd have to have Brett kind of speak on that because he's got to go through the construction plan review and then the final plot application. But go ahead, Brett. If Well, well I think we have plenty of time to uh, come to um, an agreement on that. I, I'm not sure as far as how many months until we actually record uh, the plat? Um, I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure the okay. how long that takes, but um, I don't see a problem. I think there's enough time. All right. Thank you. Can I? This is Lynn. Can I ask you about as far as the property that kind of goes into Woodland? Uh, they stopped putting the street on just where their property ended. You can kind of see by the old uh, uh, asphalt. asphalt and the new asphalt. Sure. And so this whole 
thing right through there is basically was created for for woodland and so this has to this is going to have to be uh redone here soon and so part of the maintenance agreement basically has to be with woodlands as well yeah i i i think i remember looking at it and it looks like it was just the, the only difference between the two is the is the coating that they put on top but uh, the seal coating but um well, Woodlands, Woodlands did it right up to their property, but they stopped where it, it tracked over the property that Mantrick had before you bought it. And they stopped there. But we need to make sure that because, see, Arapaho needs to access that. And Arapaho was the one that that road was put in for in the first place. Because that was, they considered that all of Arapaho's property, but because we were all just one big giant Eagle View HOA that was going to cover the whole entire campus area, they didn't ever look really close at what they were doing with the, with the actual, where the property ended and stuff. <laughs> like I said, We've, we've been watering that little triangular piece now for 23 years because we all thought that was our property. And until I ran into problems with the other side of Yellow Feather, we got into some searching and found out that they did the same crazy stuff, the New York people. They didn't really divide it off so that it could ever be divided. They kept it, they thought they'd keep it as a whole. HOA that they were going to, you know, have over the whole property. So they did some kind of strange things that have made it difficult for the people that wound up buying these to make them work very well. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't see that there's a problem though. We're, we're very easy to work with and, um, you know, if it, it could go either way. If you guys want to continue to maintain it or if you want us to maintain it, if we need to you know, seal that portion of the asphalt to make it all uh, serviceable. Um, you know, we that's part of this requirement for this uh, agreement for, for yeah. access and service. Okay, well, when we first met with with you, we were trying to do the, the, uh, the easement on this yellow feather side, and you had told us that you weren't planning on doing anything for three years. And so we kind of put off doing the resurfacing of the of all of our parking lots and stuff until you had decided but now you've moved it up by two more years so well i i don't remember that date we've owned it now for over two years um and um so anyway i, I don't recall that and I, and I don't remember you ever saying that you were going to hold off on maintaining it um uh, for that purpose well, if, if you look over to the other side of where Yellow Feather is, see how the concrete is different there in the road area? Sure, I don't, I don't know what you're saying though. Are you saying that there's a problem? Oh, no, no, I don't is think there's something that we can't work out. We need, we need to address the maintenance agreement so we can get it done and know exactly where our guy, where our lines are. Right, and that's what the city has just said that they're requiring us to do. So it, it, it seems to me like you're causing uh, some some grief here that doesn't need to be made. Well, wait, uh, I, I, I would prefer not to have accusations made here tonight. So, I oh, mean, there I is- I want to do that. I just oh. wanted to say that we need to be able to talk and know about when people are going to be doing it. Certainly. Let me, uh, Lynn, let me uh, just interject here. Um, as far as the timing is, that westerly road path that goes by uh, Yellow yellow Feather, that, that doesn't get constructed until phase two. Oh, so that, okay. So not even, that's going to be a year or two down the road. So okay. I there's consistency in the statements. Okay, that's so we'll immediate. just talk further when you're when we can get together and talk on that maintenance agreement. Well, That'll work. Sounds good. 
certainly, and uh, I uh, we do need to have that staff comment completed as part of this activity. Mark, I'm going to ask you is is that portion part of the um, conditional use permit or part of the preliminary subdivision plan? Uh, both of them. Okay. It, it's noted on both because it, of the nature. There are some redundancy, not completely line for line, but there are some redundancy between the two applications. Okay. There's Thank some, you. Uh, Chairman, there's, it's kind of interesting. There's some, in, it's just a unique thing. There's two inherited joint accesses. Typically, you don't see that on the west side and the southeast corner. Uh, the property lines aren't all on one side of a, typically a project has to be self, self-governing, but the access on the west side is, property line does go right down the middle of that. And so for whatever reason, we're inheriting two joint access aspects that are, uh, that are inherited and that need to be dealt with. And it's correct. It's worked in the past, I don't think. Um, I don't. It's worked in the past. We just need to make it work in the future. Well, and and it needs to be codified or or uh, agreed upon in a in a formal fashion, so that uh, we don't have this issue in the future. So, or an issue in the future. I'm not saying that we have an issue now, necessarily. Okay, there was another com another person that needed to make comment, I believe, that had called in. Mark, okay. Let's see. There's a, it looks like we have three attendees. Uh, there's a, a, yes. a, a Craig Christiansen. Our, are you uh, wanting to speak? Um, yeah, I can just say hello. I'm the HOA president currently for the Eagle View HOA. So I've just been watching just to see what's going on. And, and I'm actually pretty excited about this project. I think it's a great thing. So uh, happy to participate in those easement discussions and everything and, and just get it all sorted out. Okay, and then Anne Marie Conrad, could you uh, share with us? We're trying to unmute you. I don't have anything to say. We kind of wanted to see what was happening. We, we manage a unit in that area as property managers. Okay, so no public comment or, or uh, discussion here. Nope. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else? Well, there is no one else on, okay. Um, so that particular item, the, the agreement for that was discussed with the Tuga uh, persons. Uh, that particular item about access is one of the staff comments and it would be a stipulation uh, for um, the uh, for the application. Moving to application 2025, it's been We've had some additional comments. So do any of the commissioners have additional questions or comments before we go on to a applic or to a uh, motion? Okay, then I would like a motion to recommend to the city council on application 2025 preliminary subdivision plat. 
Langford Homes. And remember, it has to have the staff comments, compliance to the staff comments, findings of fact, and stipulations. Mr. Chairman, I would like to move that the Planning Commission recommend approval to the City Council of Application 20-2020-025, um, subject to the staff comments and the recommendations and findings of fact. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second, second that. <laughs> All right, I will go with I I will go with Scott on that one, if that's okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All up, Aye. opposed. Okay, I heard everyone say aye, so it's unanimous. If that was not the case, please indicate at this time. It's a little difficult with this Zoom meeting. Okay, we will move on to application 20-026 conditional use permit. We as the planning commission are the land use authority here I believe, aren't we, Mark? Yes. Yes. And one of those conditions okay. is, yeah. So we need to make a motion to approve or disapprove on on this item based upon, of course, the uh, staff comments, stipulations, and findings of fact. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, the Planning Commission acting as the Land Use Authority approve application 20-026 uh, subject to the staff comments and stipulations and findings of fact. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I have it as a unanimous. Um, okay. Thank you. That concludes the agenda items. Mark, do you have any additional topics to discuss? Uh, just, I'll just mention that the, uh, pr the preliminary plat will be moved on to the uh, anticipated to be on the next city council agenda, uh, which is the 4th of June is what will. They have a meeting this Thursday, but you can never meet that timing. So you have to, so the next available is June 4th and I'll, I'll keep uh, the applicant posted. Okay. Yes. Tony, do you have anything anything that you would like for us? Okay. Uh, any of the commissioners have any other issues to discuss? No. Okay. I need one additional. I need one additional motion. The motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adjourn tonight's planning commission. Thank you, Scott. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All right, Curtis, I've got you as a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, okay the planning commission is now adjourned for May 19, 2020. Thank you. Thank and you. thank you for coming, everyone. It's difficult, but we managed to make it through. Yes, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.